fellow Toastmasters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And guests. I see both of y'all. There are your smiling faces. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure having y'all here today. A coach as a leader. Now as we think about that, a lot of times I think we misconstrue what a coach is as maybe a motivational speaker or somebody who's going to motivate you to do something specific. But really what a coach is, is somebody who works with you on your technique in increments. So what I'd like to do is take an opportunity to role play a scenario with an athlete. Because oftentimes I think we most associate coaches with athletes. And then I'm going to expand on that into our everyday lives. So I'm working with an athlete who runs the mile. And if you're not familiar with the mile, it's just four, four laps around the track. And as she runs around the track, I time her. She's got a five minute time, which is an awesome time, by the way. But she wants to get down to four minutes and 30 seconds. That's her goal. That's what she is trying to achieve. She needs to get from point A to point B. It's my job to take her from good to better, but actually she's really already at better, if you will, and I need to take her to excellent. So in working with her, I watch her go around the track a couple times, we did the time, then we break it down into increments and sections. And by doing that, we start at the beginning. Let's check out what you're doing at the very beginning before you even start the race. What does your form look like? What does your ankles look like? How are you set down? Are you looking straight ahead? Do you have the desire? This is the part where the motivation would come in and psychology aspect. Are you seeing yourself winning? Are you moving forward and beating everybody else? Now let's move from that section and start to shave off some time. I'm gonna give you a couple of pointers on this specific portion of your run, and then you're gonna run a certain distance and we're gonna time it. She runs for 10 seconds. We tweak, we work on a couple of things on her technique. Then we shave it down to eight seconds. We do a little bit more tweaking and we've got it down to five. We're locked. We're ready to move to the next section. Now she's got four laps. She basically, for the most part, runs around the track at the same speed per lap. So obviously, what I would do is I'd like to shave off a little bit of time on each lap. Now it could be that when she goes around the curves, she slows down. But she's not aware of that because she's in the middle of running and she's running a race against competitors. And that's why she needs a coach. A coach to time her and look at that section or maybe she's slowing down. And then also on her long stretch and how her breathing operates and her stride and again, her technique. And we begin to work on just one lap alone, breaking it into pieces. And I find out that the curves is exactly what's holding her back. We shave off another couple seconds. She does it a few more times. We shave off a couple more seconds. Then we move into lap two and three. But for this, I need to give her more technique about how to run and stay in the game for the long mile. Because at the end is where you really want to push. So in lap two and three, I tell her, try to stay consistent. Don't wind yourself out. Don't burn the curves and just stay steady. You need to loop around and just stay steady. And then we come to the close, the final lap. Now, if you've ever been in a competition or a racing competition, sometimes people will burn out before they even finish. And what happens is they start at the beginning and they start burning out like at the end of the third lap and by the time they get to the finish line, they're dead and everybody else is passed. They're exhausted. And now I need to find out how this works for her. How can she utilize whatever I'm seeing and put that into her game. I notice that as she goes and hits lap three and she's going to lap four by her technique, that she needs to hit momentum 
shortly after she does the first curve. And as she hits the first curve, really start to turn it on, go to the second curve, hit the straight with as much power as she can, come into the next curve, steady, and then right about the next curve, burn it for everything you've got. Because that's where she'll hit exhaustion. I know by timing her that from that distance, she won't be able to do any more output. My goal objective here is to get her to four minutes and 30 seconds. And by breaking it down from the start to each individual lap, and then giving her feedback on that allows her to be able to get to that exact time. And we work on it over and over and over again, and then she achieves that goal. As a coach, we want to motivate people by knowledge, not just the spark of, you're going to do great out there. You're going to do awesome. That's only going to go so far. They need that extra special push. Now we take it outside of this athletic arena, if you will, which is very easy to explain and understand. Well, let's put it in the dynamics of our lives. We have maybe a parent and a child. And a child needs to be coached just like anybody else. Let's say the child is having trouble getting the trash out of the trash can, okay? But you know, they're just as tall as the trash can. <laughs> but you're thinking, wagging your finger, going, hey, just, just get it done, it's just trash, just pull it out and go take it and put it in the big can out in the garage. But that's not what they need to hear. They need to be coached on how to do it because they're not sure. So you take increments and you realize, you're like, my goodness, you only are as tall as the trash can. <laughs> Let me give you an idea. Let's tie up the top part because you can reach in and tie it off, right? And then do this for me. Just go ahead and push over the trash can because it's sealed. Make sure that it's sealed. And then pull the trash can out or the trash liner out and push back up the trash can and now you have the trash bag. Now what I've done is I've coached her on how to get the actual trash can out or the liner out of the trash can. Other than that, me just telling her isn't going to do anything. Just like if I told the runner, hey, you're going to do great and didn't give her any technique whatsoever. Well, that probably isn't going to work for her. She's not going to learn anything from that. Same thing with the scenario, the parent and the child. And that's just one funny scenario. But ultimately, there's a lot of times that we run in life where we run into a lot of different things as our children get older and older. And we have to really coach them through certain aspects so that they know what to do. I find oftentimes I run in with my daughter. She's 14 years old, and she's not sure what to do becoming a young adult. She might be an adolescent, but she can think for herself. There are things that I need to teach her and show her incrementally so that she can get to the next stage, so that she can be better and then move to excellent, so that she's not walking out in the world going, oh, I have no idea what to do. And then she just crashes her car or something like that because I didn't bother to teach her how to drive. <laughs> Pretty good example. So last weekend we were at Blossom Athletic Park driving the car with me not in the car because it really irritates her. <laughs> so you're too jumpy. You're too jumpy. That's what she told me. I was like, it's okay. You go ahead and drive around the parking lot. And that works well for her. Getting her prepared. Increment stages. She's not ready for the outside room yet. <laughs> well, let's take this into another context. We have the employee and the supervisor, or vice versa, supervisor and employee. They're having a customer service issue. What we can do is we can break this up and we can help them understand where their problem lies. Maybe it's on the intro part of their call. They're a customer service rep in a telecommunication area. They receive calls all day long working in a telephone. And let's break that up. Maybe it's the way that you're talking to the customer. It could be just a few key words that if you change those around, then the customer may be more open to you. And then we can move to the more content portion of it 
And what I find when I'm listening is that you run into the same question and you're having a hard time answering it. Or it could be a set of 10 or 15 questions. Let me give you some ideas about how to answer these specific questions. So we've taken the, the beginning, how to answer, and we've taken the middle, I've given her increments on how to get better, and then we'll take the close. I noticed in your close, you're not really asking for it. You're saying, so does this work? And you might want to try something different that's more direct and is this for you? Is this the product that you were looking for? Something that's a little more yes and no and not so, do you think this is for you? And that would be an example of just changing your wording around that gets them to understand that changing a couple of things along the way, coaching them, is all they need. Now, I'm going to take this a little bit further, and I hope we got time. Public speaking, because we're all in public speaking, are we not? Yes. Or doing presentations. It is the same thing. When you have a coach and you're working with presentational skills, you can take it the same way. Is the intro written in a way that highlights you? Do you come out and capture the audience? Do you have that voice inflection? Are they paying attention to you? Are they eyes on you? Or are they falling asleep? At the beginning portion of it, you really need to hook them in. People can get lost in the details in the conversation that's going on between you and the audience for the content message. But if you do certain things, it'll keep them in tune with you the entire time. And that could be voice, it could be low voice, it could be emotion, it could be a hook. It depends on your audience. But the speaker, while they're communicating to you, they're not naturally thinking about that. If you think about when you've been up here and you're communicating, you're just trying to get out the words that you've written down. And you're not actively thinking about it. So a coach can help you rearrange maybe some of your words to get those hooks in and really communicate with your audience. Now as you move to the last section, you're thinking about your clothes. Is your clothes dynamic? What type of clothes is it? Are you louder than you need to be? Are you softer than you need to be? Because sometimes that's all it needs to be. But is it as you're not aware, or as I said, being unaware, not sure where you're at, the coach can have eyes on you. So that when you communicate with your coach, they're going to share these insights with you in a positive way. It says if you change this, rearrange this, do this, lift your voice here, drop it there, then all of a sudden you come out and you're better. So it's all about increments and tactics and technique. And you move from being just a person who's lifting somebody up to really coaching them to become the best that they can be, to move from better to excellent. We are all teachers. We are all leaders. We are all coaches. I hope that some of the information that I've talked about today, that you'll think about when you go outside and you're communicating with your children, your friends, your family members, your other Toastmaster people, other groups and civil associations you're with, and maybe think about how you can help coach them in the most positive light. Go out and share the message. Be a part of humanity. Humanity is growing, and they love to hear what you have to say. It's Toastmaster.